Hi, kindergartners. Welcome to our Making Meaning lesson for today. I'm so happy to see you all ready to learn and work hard at home. Your teachers and I really miss you, and we feel so happy to see you working hard at home. For today's lesson, you're going to need someone or something to turn and talk to. When you see this sign that I'll hold up, you know it's time to turn and talk. When you turn to your partner, you'll move your body to actually look at them. When it's time to talk, you're going to share and then give your partner time to share also. When you're turning and talking today, it is okay if you talk in a language that you speak at home, even if it's not English. I know the students in my classroom speak so many languages, so whatever language you want to turn and talk to, that is wonderful, as long as you're sharing and thinking about the work that we're doing. So when you see this turn and talk sign, you know it's time to turn to a partner and share what you're thinking. If you have somebody at home with you, like your parents or your grandparents or your brothers or sisters, you can turn and talk to them. If you don't have someone at home with you, you can always call me on your little cell phone, tell me what you're thinking, or turn and talk to a pet or stuffy that you might have at home. I have Tiger the Tiger here still, and so I can always turn and talk to Tiger today when it's time to do that. Tiger, you wanna say hi? Hi, kindergartners. Awesome. All right, let's get started, readers. We have a lot to do today. Today, we're going to be reading a nonfiction book. Nonfiction. Let's think. You are right. Nonfiction books. We've been reading for the past few weeks in this unit. Nonfiction books are all about real or true things or people or animals. And today we're going to read this book called A Baby Penguin Story by Martha E. H. Rustad. And it is going to be all about baby penguins. Now this is a nonfiction book. Something that nonfiction books usually have is all the way back here. It's called a glossary. Glossaries help us to learn new words that might come up in our book, even if we don't know them the first time we read them. For example, if I was curious in this book about what a colony was, I can read the definition or what it means right here. A colony is a group of animals that live together in the same area. Ooh, I could also learn what a krill is. A krill is a small shrimp-like animal. Wow, glossaries in nonfiction books help us to learn new words. All right, so we're gonna be learning about baby penguins today in our nonfiction book. But before we start reading, I just wanna remind you about some other nonfiction books we've been reading in the past few weeks in this Making Meaning unit. You might remember reading all about doctors in Doctor's Help. You might remember reading about zookeepers in A Day in the Life of a Zookeeper. You might remember reading about trains or how people move around in On the Go. That's right. Nonfiction books tell us true or real things about people or animals or places or things. And we have been working so hard to learn new true information. So before we get started reading today, what else do you know about nonfiction books? Hmm, I'm gonna give you a moment to think and then I want you to turn and talk to your partner. What else do you know about nonfiction books? You can say, I know. All right, go ahead, turn and talk.
Thank you for sharing, readers. From over here on the whiteboard, Tygy told me that he knows that nonfiction books tell about different kinds of things, sometimes even food or places you can visit. I also heard one kindergartner call me and tell me that nonfiction books are always about real information. Thank you for working hard to turn and talk to your partner to get your brain thinking about nonfiction books. All right, kindergartners, let's come back to our book for today. Remember, today we'll be learning all about baby penguins. You got it, in a baby penguin story. I'm going to read this story to us and I want you to think and practice wondering. Remember, good readers wonder or start to have questions in their mind when they hear or read a story, just like we learned before. So today, we're going to practice wondering while we listen to a baby penguin story. When I read, I'll stop and ask us some questions to help us practice wondering about what we're learning. All right, readers, let's get started. A baby penguin story. A baby penguin story by Martha E. H. Rustad. A white egg sits in a rocky nest. A tired dad sits on top. Bip! The egg cracks. Out hatches a fluffy penguin chick. Cheep, chatter, beep. The tiny chick is hungry. Its mom spits up fish into its open mouth. Brrr, shiver. Ah, cuddle. Mom huddles around her chick. In its icy world, the chick stays warm. Remember that a chick is what we call a baby penguin. Icy means very cold with ice on the ground or maybe even snow. In its icy world, the chick stays warm. All right, we're going to pause here and think. What did you learn about how adult penguins take care of their babies or chicks? I want to give you a moment to think. I'll read the question again to make sure you know what you're going to talk about. What did you learn about how adult penguins take care of their babies or chicks? All right, ready? I'm gonna put the book down and hold up our turn and talk sign because now it's your turn. Turn and talk to your partner. You're going to say, I learned. All right, go ahead. a kindergartner and she told me that she learned that adult penguins feed or help cuddle with their chicks. She said the words mom huddles around her chick helped her and she also thought that here the mom was feeding the chick. Thank you for sharing. All right we're going to keep reading. If you had the same thought, you can go like this. Or if you had a different thought, that's wonderful. That's okay. We're going to keep reading. I want to give you a compliment too. I heard kindergartners share in many different languages. That's wonderful. Keep it up. Hello. Who are you? The chick finds friends in its colony. Colony means a group of penguins that live together in the same area. The chick finds friends in its colony. Baby chicks play while their parents find food. 
Waddle, waddle, belly slide. The young penguins go for an icy ride. Back they hop across rocky ground. Molt, scratch, pick. Fluffy feathers fall off the chick. With its beak, it preens new waterproof feathers. Preens means cleans and moves the feathers with its beak. With its beak, it preens new waterproof feathers. Wow. We're going to pause here. What did you learn about how penguin chicks play? You can say, I learned when you turn to your partner. Let me read the question again. What did you learn about how penguin chicks play? All right, go ahead, stop, turn, and talk to your partner. You're going to say, I learned. Ready? Go ahead. Thank you for sharing, kindergartners. I heard many friends say that they learned that penguins play by sliding or hopping around on the ice. Splish, splash. It's time to learn swift swimming skills. Swift means fast. It's time to learn fast swimming skills. The penguin chick needs speed to catch a tasty swarm of krill. Krill are small shrimp-like animals. The penguin chick needs speed to catch a tasty swarm of krill. Hmm, I have another question for you here. What swimming skills does a penguin chick need to have to catch fish? What kind of skills does a chick or baby penguin need to have to catch fish? All right, think about that. And then we're gonna come back to that question later. Hmm, because I wanna know what swimming skills do you think a penguin chick would need? You go first. No, you jump in. Through cold ocean waves, penguins seem to fly. Their wings act as flippers. Flippers are parts of sea animals like whales and seals that help them swim. You can pretend right now like you have a flipper at home. Yeah, their wings act as flippers. The chick swims up for air. It dives down deep, catch a fish, swallow it live. Yum. Now it's time for goodbye. The young penguin is off to catch fishy snacks. Someday it will return to build its own nest. All right, time for another question here. And this time we're going to turn and talk to our partners. What did you learn about how penguins move through the water? You're going to say, I learned. Let me read the question again. What did you learn about how penguins move through the water? All right, go ahead and think for a moment. And when you're ready, turn and talk to your partner. I learned. Thank you for sharing, readers. I heard so many kindergartners share that they learned that penguins use their flippers to move through the water. And I heard one other kindergartner tell me that penguins move quickly through the water. Wow. Let's reread a little bit. 
good readers reread or read again sometimes to help them learn and remember new information. Let's start here. Splish, splash, it's time to learn swift swimming skills. The penguin chick needs speed to catch a tasty swarm of krill. You go first, no you jump in. Through cold ocean waves, penguins seem to fly. Their wings act as flippers. I see so many students going like this because they're making a sign to show me they agree. They said, I know penguins use flippers to move through the water. The chick swims up for air. It dives down deep. Catch a fish, swallow it live. Ooh. Yum. Here's something else we learned. Penguin chicks dive or move through the water down deep underwater to catch a fish. Now it's time for goodbye. The young penguin is off to catch fishy snacks. Someday it will return to build its own nest. That's the end of our story, a baby penguin story. But before we talk about some other things, I want us to go back to this page where I asked you a question earlier. Here, we're going to practice wondering or asking questions as we read or heard the story read to us to be even stronger and better readers. So I asked you, what are some things you're wondering about swimming skills a penguin chicks need to have to catch fish? And I'm also wondering, what are some other things that you're wondering after hearing this book about penguin chicks? So first, let's answer our question. What swimming skills does a penguin chick need to have to catch fish? Think about that for a moment. And when you're ready, you're gonna turn and talk. I got lots of calls for that one, kindergartners, and I heard many different languages. One student in Somali told me that they, actually, they told a friend at home that they know that penguin chicks need to swim quickly. Did anyone else say that? I heard lots of friends at home say something similar. Great. Here it says, it's time to learn swift swimming skills. Penguin chicks need to learn to swim swiftly or quickly. So now, what are some other things that you are wondering after you heard this book about penguin chicks? When it's time to turn and talk, you can say, I wonder. So think for a moment, what are some things you are wondering after hearing this book all about penguin chicks? Go ahead, think turn and talk. Kindergartners, wow! Taihi and I heard so many friends at home sharing wonderful wonderings. We heard students in Spanish, say that they were thinking about and wondering about why penguins live on the rocks. We also heard students share with people at home that they noticed and wondered why adult penguins take care of baby penguins. They were wondering that. I also heard a student wonder why penguins have such short little flippers when they're small. Excellent job asking yourself questions while you heard this story to practice wondering because that's what good readers do. All right, kindergartners. Now, we finished our nonfiction book, A Baby Penguin Story. But before we move on to our independent reading, we have a few
few other new vocabulary words to learn to help us better understand what we just read. The first vocabulary word is fluffy. Can you all say fluffy with me? Fluffy, very nice. Fluffy means soft and puffy, like feathers. I can see here in this picture that this dog is very fluffy or soft and puffy, like feathers. <gasps> Penguins have fluffy feathers. You got it. Way to remember what we just read. Okay, I want you all to say fluffy to the air at home. Fluffy, whisper fluffy in your hand. Whisper it into your elbow, fluffy. And show me what fluffy feathers or fur looks like. Soft, good, you got it. Great work, readers. Our next word that we need to learn and review is rocky. Can everyone say rocky with me? Rocky. Rocky means covered with rocks. The kindergartner was wondering why penguins live places that are rocky. Rocky means covered with rocks. Show me a rock in your hand. Now lots of them. You got it. That's rocky. All right. I want everyone to say rocky to their right shoulder. Rocky. Now say it to your left shoulder. Rocky. Nice job. Rocky means covered with rocks. Look what's next. We already talked about this one a little bit. This one is icy. Can everyone say icy? Icy means covered with ice. This person is skating on ice. Skating means moving along smoothly on ice. Covered with ice, icy. Brr, when it's icy, it's very cold. Everyone say icy with me, ready? Icy, show me how you feel when it's icy. Brr, very cold. All right, this time I want you to say icy to somebody who's at home with you or maybe a pet or stuffed animal you have at home. Icy, 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 great. Okay, one more new vocabulary word for us. Oh, we need some tape for that one. All right, our last one for today is the word tasty. We learned that penguins like to eat tasty krill. Tasty means delicious. Penguins like to eat tasty small fish. Delicious. Here is a bowl of fruit that looks very tasty. Let's say tasty together. Tasty. Mmm, I'm gonna rub my tummy because I know tasty means delicious or very good. All right, let's read our new vocabulary words together so we can practice reviewing what we just learned. I will point. When you see my pointer, you'll read with me. All right, ready? Fluffy, good. Rocky, icy, tasty. Okay, now we're gonna play a game called, is it or is it not? We'll start with our word fluffy. Is a, is a, is a book fluffy? Yes or no? You can give me a thumbs up if you think yes a book is fluffy or a thumbs down if you think no it's not fluffy. And remember fluffy means soft. Is a book fluffy? Great work. I see most kindergartners with their thumbs down. Books are not fluffy but this dog is fluffy. Baby penguins are fluffy. Our next word is rocky which means covered with rocks. Okay, we're gonna play the same game. Is the floor at your house rocky? Is it covered with rocks? Yes or no? Go ahead, show me. Wow, I saw most kindergartners say no. The floor at my home is not covered in rocks. But some people said yes. Maybe they're outside 
Or maybe their home has some rocks on the floor. Rocky means covered in rocks. Our next word is icy, which means covered in ice. Mm. Okay, we're gonna play the same game. Is it icy in the summertime when it's hot out? Yes or no? You got it, kindergartners. It's not icy in the summertime because icy is when it's very cold. Our last word is tasty. This one means delicious. Okay, for this one, I just want you to say something that you think is tasty. Go ahead, shout it out. What's tasty? Mm, I heard so many tasty things. Kindergartners said all kinds of sweet treats and fruits and vegetables. So many tasty things. Great work, readers. Learning new vocabulary words and learning new facts about penguins in our nonfiction book. Now it's your turn. Today, you're going to get a nonfiction book and practice reading at home. And while you're reading your nonfiction book, you're going to be thinking about what you are learning and you're going to share what you learned. In your extension activity packet, you can go to the page that says learning information on Monday. Number one says read or listen to a nonfiction book. And then number two says draw and write about something you learned. That's what you're going to do. And I'll show you what I mean really quickly. Today, I'm going to read the nonfiction book called Polar Bears for my independent reading. When I'm reading, I'm gonna make sure that I'm looking at the pictures and using the sounds I know to figure out words that I don't know. Polar bears can swim a long way without stopping to rest. Aha, I just learned a new fact. So if I were doing my learning extension activities, I would draw a polar bear and I would write, polar bears can swim a long way without stopping. If you don't have your learning acti activities extension, don't worry. You can always just write and draw on a blank piece of paper about what you learned. And if you don't have a nonfiction book at home, that is okay. For more books to read at home, you can visit the Seattle Public Schools website, select student portal, and then click on academic tools. You can use Pebble Go or Tumble Books to find nonfiction books to read. You could also visit the Scholastic Learning at Home site to find more nonfiction books. Okay, kindergartners? So your job now is to take a little stretch break, move your body, and then I want you to get a nonfiction book and read it and make sure you're thinking about what you learned and then write and draw all about it. All right, we'll see you next time. Keep up the great work readers. Bye.